Hi everyone, Jesse Noller back. I'm Jesse Noller. I am the founder and one of the owners of the Hummel Fungus, a full service mushroom farm and mycology supply here in Lafayette, Colorado. Uh, this is part two of uh, just a set of videos that I'm putting up that cover fruiting chamber bases for growing mushrooms. Uh, so in the video before this, we covered, you know, your basics, your basic needs of a fungus, right? And what we covered is fungi and mush mushrooms um, do not drink the water in the air. So it, it may be a humid environment, but it's not using that for sustain, uh, to sustain itself. So we want humidity, but we don't want too much because we don't want mold. What else do we want in a fruiting environment? We want lots of air exchange. Lots and if you've heard of fresh air exchange, FAE, or you've heard of air exchange, what it means is you need to get rid of the CO2 in the environment as much as you can, right? Punch holes in the side of a tub, put it in a fan, do whatever you gotta do, right? Those fungi love fresh air because they actually consume oxygen and output CO2. So if you have a tented environment and you don't off gas it, it will build up CO2. All right. So let's talk about the humble funguses fruiting chamber currently. <laughs> we'll change it up. Uh, so what we have, and this has changed a lot, but our current setup is an eight by eight grow tent and I'll actually show it to you. Uh, it's an eight by eight grow tent and it's blackout, it's got windows, it's over there, etc. But this is a relatively sealed environment, right? So these were designed for the cannabis industry, indoor growing. So they're smell proof, they're humidity and water resistant, things like that. So they're really great for little grow houses. Uh, I like indoor green houses too, but they take up too much space and have too much waste in space. Anyways. We have a tent. Now, if we go back to the basics video, first thing we're gonna do is we add humidity. Now, the basics of humidity is you want to pump the humidity in high because humidity is very heavy, water is heavy. It will fall very quickly. So if you pump it in here, it won't go anywhere. It will just like fog the bottom, right? Uh, so you want to pump your humidity in center or high, like as high as you can go. So we have ours pumped in about seven feet off the floor, right? Just about a foot off the top. This is connected to a PVC uh, pipe, and I'll show that to you. With a tub full of water and a 12 disc House of Hydro Mist. This is cheaper than a humidifier and uh, it scales more because we can go get a 50 gallon drum and drop that mister in. We've got a 50 gallon drum, etc. We do separate videos on the mister setup. Regardless, this is connected to a humidity controller that has a probe inside of the tent, right? That's probe number one. Uh, so that probe is connected to a controller and that controller is set to 75% relative humidity, right? So what this does, what this controller does is it senses the environment and any time the humidity falls below 75%, it runs the humidifier until it hits 75% and then it shuts off. Now, what actually happens is that it's nothing is that precise. And so what you'll see is you'll see your humidity drop and then it goes up and it spikes and it goes down and it does this, right? So it's more like a sine wave. Um, so that's what the controller does. So it intermittently or consistently pumps humidity into it. Giant humidifier. Now, why do we have it outside of the tent? I got asked this a couple of times. Because electricity hates water. <laughs> and this has plugs and cables and power cables and extension cables and shit like that. I actually used to run with my humidifier in the tent and I had electricity issues and things like that. And I know you can get waterproof too. Anyways, this has filtered air. So we made a little filter. And so the air intake comes in from the ambient humidity or the ambient environment. 
and we've got the environment set to about 68, uh, 69 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Pumps in that air, filters it, hum uh, humidifies it, and blasts it. The fan, the fan here is a 600 CFM fan. So it's fast and it's chunky. So when this thing kicks on, it's blowing 600 feet, uh, cubic feet per minute of air, humidified air into here. So uh, I, I got asked actually why we don't have uh, a run that goes like this and then mists down more evenly like that. Our airflow design ties into that. But more importantly, at 600 CFM, the humidity doesn't stop here and fall. At 600 CFM, it falls off right about here, right? And you can see it in the tent. It's like this huge waterfall that comes out. Um, so that's why we don't have that. Um, now, air outtake. Where does the air go? We talked a lot about oxygen needs and how fungi, especially mushroom, uh, fruiting bodies, need a lot of air, like so much air, right? So what we do is we have another 600 CFM fan down here. So this is also 600. This is programmable and it has a probe here to monitor the environment and temperature. So we can actually say, hey, shut off if the uh, humidity falls below 50% or something else. So this fan is set to a very low setting because the space is very small now and it doesn't have to work as hard to drain the entire environment. So um, right now we've got this at like a setting of one, super low. We may pump this up over time. The gist is this. This pulls the air out and it externally vents it. That's the other principle of, grow, of fruiting chamber design. If you can, you want to vent the air that you pull out of your thing outside. If you're not, you need to filter it. In other words, if you're blowing air, if you're pulling air out of this environment and you're growing mushrooms in it, and you're not filtering what you're putting back into your environment, you are pumping lots of mushroom spores into your environment, and that will cause allergic reactions in some people, etc. Don't do that. Filter your outtake. Always filter your outtake. We're lucky we can externally vent, so it goes outside and the mushrooms just roll wild. Hooray! Um, if you can't um, externally vent, you can go and get a charcoal filter or an inline HEPA filter or something else like that. Scrub the air. So, this is a 600 CFM fan. It is always on. We don't have it on a timer. We don't turn it on. We don't turn it off. It is constantly pulling, and here's why. When the humidity comes up, and it's blasted out like that. It's got particles falling the entire time, right? It's a little gentle humidity rainstorm. Um, so it's dripping down like this. There are two things. Number one, CO2 is heavier than oxygen. Now in previous designs, I've also pulled air out super high. Um, in this case, there are two things. Number one, CO2 is heavier than oxygen. So we want to pull as much CO2 out of the tent as quickly as we can and get as much fresh air in there as quickly as we can. That's why we got this low. The second thing is, where does contamination build up? On the floor, right? As the humidity comes in, as your mushroom spore, etc., as you walk through it, as life happens, things are just gonna fall. They're gonna fall down in the environment. Dust is gonna collect. The dog hair is gonna fall off of you. You know, it's not a clean room. Um, it's a clean enough room. And so I actually originally moved this down, not because of CO2, but because I want to be able to, number one, get rid of contamination. Number two, I wanna get rid of CO2 in the environment and it'll be down here at the bottom. And then there's a third reason and that's aerodynamics. When this moisture is coming in, this and this 
the air comes in, it's humid, and out. Right? So basically, this entire time, things are shifting through the tent and just falling down, getting pulled out of that, right? So the current is down and out and through. Now, does this mean that there are certain areas that are slightly drier or less humid than others? Potentially. But again, this is a 600 CFM fan and it doesn't have an obstructed view, uh, obstructed intake, right? So this is chucking air and it's blowing through this, but ultimately it's getting sucked out, right? So that's why we have that set up like that. You don't have to do it that way. You can be a lot more gentle. You can set this on a timer. You can do whatever you want. You can have hoses. Um, you can have uh, things that even out the humidity, etc. We don't need it. Uh, so now what we have is we have an environment with an air current that goes roughly like this, right? Now, why is it okay to have different zones of humidity in here? Think about the forest floor. Going back to the first video, the forest floor has layers. This one is a full, this is full of dead leaves and detritus, etc. This is where the fungus lives, and here's where like pins pop up, right? So if pins are here, what are the attributes? It is extremely moist and it's high in CO2. Uh, so what does this bias? Well, if I have a fruiting rack right there, that fruiting rack has higher humidity than the fruiting racks over here. So all of our first flush blocks, the ones that haven't pinned yet, the ones that we put in there just fresh, they go on this rack. That means it's closer to the environment of a forest floor. Then we rotate them counterclockwise. So it goes like this, right? So this has a couple of reasons. So number one, you rotate it back like this because fundamentally the fruiting body is fine. This entire thing is humid enough. They're not drinking it for energy or sustainability. It's just to keep the fungus looking beautiful and moist and rich, right? So we rotate them counterclockwise closer to the fan. Remember that. So we set them here in the high humidity environment for pin set, and we rotate them into less and less humidity. When we rotate, it's usually around a flush boundary. So mushrooms come in flushes. So your first harvest is your first flush. Then it goes dormant, then it pushes out more mushrooms. That's your second flush. So each time we get mushrooms from a block, that's a flush. So when we harvest some mushrooms, we put it on another shelf. And each time we do that, and maybe we'll only flush a block twice or three times. Um, but regardless, we're moving it closer to the fan. Why? As a block ages, in other words, as it progresses and flushes, the higher in likelihood of contamination there is, right? So if you're growing mushrooms in a monotub, each time you crack that lid and you harvest, your risk of contamination goes up, right? So, and it's because the fungus is running out of energy, right? It's dying. <laughs> the fungus is just like, oh, I'm pooped, I'm done. Um, so that's why we rotate closer to the fan. So if one of these blocks does get mold, and they do, um, the mold would be pulled out first. Sweet. Um, so yeah, so that's the basics. Let me simplify this since I've been doodling. Eight by eight tent. Humidifier set to 75% relative humidity. No heater, nothing else. It's pulling filtered air in from the environment. So the environment's temperature is roughly the uh, whatever the tent's environment minus the humidity or plus the humidity. Um, so we got eight by eight tent. And then down here, we've got another 600 CFM fan. And over here, we've got a 600 CFM fan. 
so they're balanced when they kick in. Um, this one pulses on and off to keep the humidity up. This one is always running, but it's going up and down. To pull the CO2 out, pull the humidity through the tank, and get rid of all the contamination for as much as possible. So that's the basics. Now, let's go look at the tent. I'll do this in part three. That way, each video is slightly shorter. Be right back.